the uptown northwest dc area is heavily slept on because a lot of the neighborhoods don't look bad there's a lot of up-to-date homes man tourists walk in especially in the columbia heights area but they still active though there are so many alleys and cuts uptown speaking of cut we got the cut crew versus the one seven crew a slept on bloody war that left innocent bystanders to include underage children as well as crew affiliates slain on the streets. So 14th and G-Rod, also known as the Cut Crew, also known as G-Rod, and probably something else, but let's stick with G-Rod. And then you got 17th and Euclid, also known as 17 and 17 The Rock. Oh, I swear, man, the more I research uptown, the more I'm starting to realize it's not as sweet as people make it seem. And shout out to the supporter that sent me the original article on this story. Northwest is complex. There's a little of everything. It's fast paced, mixed, modern, looks beautiful and horrible at the same time, depending on what street you want. But on a serious note, you can get put in a trick bag real quick up top. 2005, Dante Manning, nine years old, was shot in the head by a stray bullet at 13th and Euclid Northwest in the line of fire, not the intended target. 2007, Terry Cutchin, 13 years old, a straight A student, shot and killed by mistake. 1439 G. Rod Street Northwest in the line of fire, not the intended target. 2007, Tayon Glover, age 29, and brother of the actor from The Wire and DC Go-Go legend Anwan Glover, was shot and killed in the 1400 block of G-Rod Street at approximately 9.55 p.m. on August 23rd in a line of fire, possibly not the intended target. Prior to the shooting, Tayon tried to mediate some beefs with some young guys near 17th and Euclid. All right, follow me. It's the critical section. August 2010, Sean Robinson, age 19, associate of the 17 crew, murdered by G Rod members. And just one month later, September 2010, Jamal Coates shot and killed near U Street Northwest, leaving a funeral. Kiara Johnson of the G Rod crew was one of the gunmen, allegedly. So G-Rod was a crew that had beef with different hoods. 14th and G-Rod was the hot spot. 17 The Rock had beef with neighboring crews as well. 17th and Euclid was a hot spot. Not every murder fell at those intersections, but they were known sections that the crews chose to hang at and claim. G-Rod and the 17 crew were not always at odds, well at least not to the point where gunplay was involved. Look at this. Some of them even knew each other as well. But that's how it be. Just like the 37th and Simple City beef in Southeast. Bro, you got his missile took too, bro. We ain't never get our dog took, bro. Oh, God. They got their dog and their cash took, and that's everything. <laughs> that's everything. If any other niggas who diss me or even diss me on live see me in person from any of their disses, after they disses and or whatever, on my talking about no shoe shit, I'm going to smack you. Plain and simple. I'm going to smack you. Oh, man, you know what I'm what you know? Oh, you know what I'm doing, man. You know, the gram and all the internet, you know, they're going to make it seem what it ain't, man. I'm saying, but you know, you know what it is for real. Fuck that shit. Fuck them niggas. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Fuck them niggas. But the difference with the Simple City and 37th War is that it was grandfathered in, passed down from the older guys. The youngest took it to the next level, man, putting the murder game down early. But when you look at the root of the problem, it's always something small that could have been resolved through conversation or even a fist fight to settle their differences. Maybe a bike was stolen. Someone got jumped. Someone smart out the mouth for no reason. Maybe somebody stole a food stamp card that belonged to the opposition's mom. Who knows? But in the case of G-Rod and 17, a ex-crew member turned government witness Ricardo Epps stated when he joined the 17 crew they had beef with G-Rod but it wasn't too serious at that time. 
That changed when Phil Tompkins, a member of 1-7, got into a fight with Johnson. Epp said, adding that after the fight, the rivalry intensified. Let's continue. In August 2007, Epp said, 1-7 members shot and killed a member of G-Rod, Tayon Glover, in the 1400 block of G-Rod Street Northwest. After the shooting, Epps recalled saying the shooting wasn't a good idea. It wasn't right. I wanted the beef to stop, Epps said. I told them it's only a matter of time. Members of G-Rod are going to retaliate. So how does a fight between two people turn into murder? Another thing that's weird about this is that Ricardo Epps started with 1-7 and ended up a part of the G-Rod crew. Hmm. Here's more of his testimony told to the jury. During trial, Epps told jurors that before he joined G-Rod, he was a member of a crew known as 1-7 and would hang with Coates and other members of the crew near 17th and Euclid Street, Northwest. Shortly after, Epps said he began to hang out with a member of G-Rod. By March 2009, Epps considered himself a member of G-Rod and told jurors that he became close with the co-defendants. In court, Epps said that when Carlton was jailed in March 2009, Epps would call him and keep him updated on G-Rod matters. Often, the two men talked about criminal activities, including drug activities and shootings. Coates, 21, was shot and killed on September 28, 2010, after a funeral procession for his friend, Ashley McRae, who was murdered a week earlier. Epps told jurors that Coates was one of the main dudes of the 1-7 crew. Epps said he called Carlton to tell him that Coates had been murdered. That's a big loss for them, Carlton is heard saying in the jail call, played in court Thursday. He was their heart. Like I stated, man, Coates was shot leaving the funeral for his friend, Ashley McRae, who was shot in the forehead by accident by a guy named Damon Sams, a.k.a. Nine Millie, from a rough area in the southeast known as Lynch Mob. Now, let's take a ride into the case real quick because, man, I cannot make this shit up. Damon, who killed Coates' friend, Ashley McRae, turned himself in and pled guilty to involuntary manslaughter. Sam stated that he shot McCray once in the head while she was seated in the back seat of a car early in the morning of September 18, 2010. He said he fired the gun accidentally when his finger touched the trigger. He was attempting to engage the safety on a 40 caliber semi-automatic pistol. Alright, so these are his words in court. I don't call it a murder case. Sam said at sentencing, Ashley passed away due to me putting a gun on safety. Now, after reading his testimony, I don't believe he meant to shoot that girl. He was sentenced to 10 years and released in 2018. I guess they only gave him 10 because he pled guilty and they believed it was an accident. You see, when the system investigate, they really investigate and bring in all kinds of specialists that could tell if someone was done on purpose or something was done on purpose. And they look at that angle according to what the suspect said and figure it out. Yeah, they vicious. But sidebar, and I mentioned this before, a lot of young guys play with guns and have no experience. I think most of them just pick up guns and use them. No type of training or understanding of the firearms they holding. And that's why I think damn near every street guy that got into a gunfight has some story about his gun jamming. A Glock is a very reliable handgun. There have been countless guys who complained about a Glock jamming up. I believe these guns get passed around, and used and abused without any care. They don't know you're supposed to remove the slide and clean and oil your firearm in between use to make sure it's functioning properly. And when you purchase it under the table on the streets, who knows? Maybe that Glock been fired 5,000 times without being cleaned. And now some young guy is trusting the gun with his life. Moving along. So Damon Sams was sentenced to 10 years for the murder of Ashley McCray. He gets out in 2018, and you ain't gonna believe this. Just three years later, in 2021, he was charged with first and second degree murder in a fatal shooting of a security guard in Lanham. Let's read. 
Officers received a call for a reported shooting around 11.45 p.m. at Veterans of Foreign Wars Post in the 9800 block of Good Luck Road. Police said they found Brown with multiple gunshot wounds in the parking lot. He later died at the hospital. Sams is accused of shooting Brown during a dispute when Brown was working as a security guard at a private event at the VWF Post, according to an initial investigation. Man, that's crazy. Anyway, let's make a U-turn back to the original story. So G-Rod and the 1-7 crew at the time are at war, eye for an eye. It's getting bloody. Both crews are under investigation. Now here's the confusing part that I can't seem to figure out. Rest in peace to Jamal Coates, allegedly a 1-7 member or potentially just an affiliate. But what was his role in this? Because on one hand, according to ex-member and government witness Ricardo Epps, he said he called Carlton to tell him that Coates had been murdered. And Carlton responded, that's a big loss for them. He was their heart. Now that can mean a couple of things. Number one, maybe he's the good positive guy in the neighborhood that know the killers, but he's not really about the street life. Maybe he was just a good kid in the mad city like Kendrick Lamar. Every neighborhood has those, by the way. Number two, maybe he was one of them, but just smart and acted as a leader. I don't know, man. I'm leaning towards number one. A community activist named Brian Weaver wrote about the time he spent with Jamal Coates as they spent six weeks in Guatemala with an organization, Hoops Sagrado. And honestly, he didn't seem like a bad guy, man. Not the type to pick up a gun, but I don't know. I'll leave that right there. It seemed like the war between 1-7 and G-Rod, a.k.a. the Cut Crew, would never end. Back and forth murders, rarely were their main targets hit. Always bystanders and associates, and guys that had nothing to do with the last murder. One of the worst murders was of Dante Manning, just nine years old, man, shot and killed in 05 on 13th and Euclid. Of a little boy playing outside his D.C. apartment 12 years ago really touched a nerve in this city. The police chief at the time was so angry he offered a huge reward. It's one that still stands today. The murder of Dante Manning has never been solved, but the lead detective now says he came awfully close. Fox News Paul Wagner has tonight's rewind to the crime. This is where Dante Manning was shot back in 2005, right here on this sidewalk on 13th Street Northwest. It's a story we covered extensively. The reward shot up to $125,000. Here's what happened. We have the, uh, you know, the worst situation, you know, an innocent bystander who's a, who's a little boy, nine years old, shot in the head while playing. Miss, miss, miss! He's breathing on his own right now, is my understanding, but he's in very critical condition. He took a shot right to the, uh, to the face and swatched in the back of the, the head. About 9.55 this evening, we had a... Uh, a lone black male that was on the corner right over here and that was firing from a handgun down the block. Uh, don't know at this point who he was shooting at. We're going to put some pressure, uh, incredible pressure on these little thugs around here until somebody gives something up. We still need help from the public. We've gotten some calls, but we don't have enough coming in to be able to piece together enough to find out who's responsible for this. <laughs> I'm Detective Mitch Cradle. I'm a detective with the Metropolitan Police Department. Major case, cold case unit. Every case I've been involved in in that particular neighborhood, um, an arrest was made um, without a problem. And this is the only case that I've been involved in in that neighborhood, whereas an arrest has not been made yet. This was such a big deal that the reward went up to over $100K, man. Even an author named Rose Marie Berger wrote a book titled, Who Killed Dante Manning? No suspects were charged. The case remained unsolved to this day. Rest in peace. The other case in the 2007 murder of Terry Cutchin, 13 year old at the 1400 block of G-Rod was just an insane man, insane. The only difference was the suspect was caught in charge. 
This murder brought the community out to Girard Street for a vigil to honor the young male Terry. Here's a clip of that video. Rest in peace. By 2010, when Sean Robinson of 1-7 was murdered by G-Rod, both crews were technically losing. The amount of bodies, the overall loss to the community as a whole, eventually will cause a domino effect. There has to be an end. Those crew members that stand in have to fall. And the law enforcement came with the blitz, a 47-page indictment. Crew members from 1-7 were put away in prison. Seven G-Rod members were charged in total two of which you see on the screen. So you have Ricardo Epps, government witness, release date unknown. Devin Black, release date 2035. Lester Williams, release date 2025. LaFonte Carlton, release date 2032. Will be 41 or 42 years old, depending on his birthday. Robert Gibbons was released in 2018. Hmm. Kier M. Johnson, release date 2058, will be 68 or 69 years old when he's released depending on his birthday. And Marcellus E. Jackson, release date 2044, will be 55 to 56 years old when he's released depending on his birthday. Tomorrow's not promised, man, so make the right choices today and stay out the way. Night Rider 707, don't forget to like the video, comment below. Until next time, we up out of here.